Hello, everyone at JCS. This is Kyungju. Say hello. Yay. <laughs> And we are the eighth graders, not me, but <laughs> here are the eighth graders. And actually, it's very bright and sunny this morning, and everyone's like, it's so hot. <laughs> But we're very grateful that we were able to come here and spend time together. Last night, it was passionate night. <laughs> All the girls and Enoch having fun in their own ways. <laughs> and here we are. We are going to just kind of talk about um, our experiences here at Gyeongju. And um, I had this one question to all of them, and that was, uh, what is the most impressive historical site or the person or the thing or story <laughs> that you've encountered, encountered during this trip to Gyeongju? So let's see who's going to start. How about Seoul? Can I pass the mic to Seoul or I'll move to you? Yeah. most interesting thing in Gyeongju was Cheongsangdae and Emile Pong because Cheongsangdae has like 7 and 27 floors and 12 minutes and 12 hours and 24 minutes like I think it's 24 seasons in Korean and for like Emile Pong there was a myth in there there was a baby And the mother jumped into the lava for the baby, and she died for the baby. Yeah, so that myth was interesting to me. Okay, um, the most cool thing that I uh, saw was I definitely think that uh, it was the tomb mounds because, well, it's cool to think that um, back then the burial practices were much different and the way people used to treat their, um, like, dead kings or whatever was, like, a lot different compared to how we do it now because it was in the past due to religious and um, cultural reasons. Um, I especially think it's interesting that there's so many of them. Like, I expect there to just be like one or two or something, but there's like a whole like ten in just one location. So I think it's cool to think that this has been happening for such a long time, and it's cool to contrast them with stuff like the pyramids in Egypt, where people also used to bury their um, dead kings in like these huge mounds. And like, I just think the history about uh, of how humans have approached death and like afterlife is just very um, interesting. Um, the most impressive and memorable historical site that we visited in this Gyeongju graduation trip was visiting uh, Sokuram, and there were mainly two reasons and. The first one is that uh, it was very impressive to see that our ancestors that our ancestors are aware of scientific knowledge, and because they were able to control and adjust temperature and humidity in the temp in the cave, and it was very impressive to learn about that. And the second reason is because this place taught me a norm that. Humans will do anything in order to achieve and grant their wishes and hopes, such as health and money, like flourishing in their business. And I learned this because I saw many people buying, buying down at the statue of Buddha, and people were paying money to hang their wishes. And also, there were other monks who were. Worshipping him, and even Gautama Siddhartha, he said that he himself is not a god, but it was. But people are idolizing them, and I learned that humans will do anything in order to achieve their wishes. Deep. Okay, thank you. Let's move to Eunice. Uh, the most impressive thing in Gyeongju was. National Gyeongju Museum because uh, I've never been there and uh, the 
gold, the golden crown was very amazing and pretty, and I could learn a lot of history of Gyeongju. And the place where the golden crown was very dark, but the golden crown was only one that was shining. So the my most impressive thing in Gyeongju was National Gyeongju Museum. Ah, uh, the most impressive thing in Gyeongju was the sakuram. Uh, it was my first time experiencing the culture of Buddhism in my life. And there was a real monk who was praying to the Buddha statue, and it was, which was really interesting. And the sakuram was in a forest, which, was, which I could enjoy the nature that God has made. Um, the most interesting thing in Gyeongju was also Sokkuram <laughs> um, because it was the representative of Shila's construction and it was like naturally designed to control their own temperature and humidity and also I learned about new facts about that they, it took 40 years to curb all the stuff yeah, it was really interesting um, for me, it was Mummu Dewangling, also called the Tomb of King Mummu, and um, it was because I've never ever seen a tomb in the water water before, <laughs> and also because it was interesting to learn more about the history and culture of Shinla. I learned that Mummu uh, Dewangling was used to bury the body of the king Mummu. And it was really interesting to see the surroundings of how, yeah, how beautiful it is. Thank you so much. That was one question that I gave to them. Ponder upon the things that we've seen and how beautiful, beautiful they are and how it's also very mysterious to think back to how long ago it was to, you know, have all these ancestors build these wonderful things that is just amazing as they have already said um, but I wanted to kind of go even deeper kind of like what Enoch said um, all these things that all these kings uh, what um, Ellie mentioned they were trying to bury a lot of things <laughs> they really wanted to take all the all of that maybe they didn't believe that they can take all of that or or have afterlife or they were believing that whatever the reason and whatever we are studying afterwards but I think um, a lot of people are still trying to just hold on to a lot of things in this world and and I mean it's very okay and it's good that we have money that we have power that we have you know knowledge those are the things that God also gives us right as a blessing but um, I just think uh, and, and I was looking into the Bible verse and actually I wanted to have maybe um, three people in the back to read. I have this Bible passage from Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 21. So it will fit exactly three people, right? So you can read 19, you can read 20 and 21. Okay. Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth, where mud and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Bible verse that we can refer to when we think about where our heart is, because our life as Christians, it's all about what's in our heart. You know, what we can decorate ourselves, you know, thinking that we are this great. And we can think about like what we can be even after our death. But then with Jesus Christ, that isn't really what our God is saying to us, right? He doesn't talk about, um, you know, bear, uh, bury all of these goods like gold and diamonds, you know, into our tomb. It's rather um, have your heart uh, in me, right? Um, uh, I was just going to ask you the second question. Um, right now in your heart, I know it's, it's you might say, Jesus is my treasure. <laughs> but I want to be just honest, you know, at my uh, stage in my life, maybe I really value health. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to say how old I am, but <laughs> I'm pretty old. <laughs> and uh, health is so important, you know. Sometimes I feel like that is my treasure. Um, but I always go back to God, you know. Oh, you know, this is also not mine. I cannot control everything in my life. But God always leads me back to uh, 
thinking, you know, what is in your heart? What is your treasure? Um, I want you to think about that. I think that is God's message to us. Like as we look at all these beautiful things, we praise God, we worship God for that. But at the same time, we want to go back to that very, you know, uh, foundational pro- uh, question. So um, it doesn't have to be Jesus, guys. Just be honest. Uh, what are the things that you are thinking of as your treasure or, or one prayer topic that you've been praying for recently? And maybe we can even pray for that right now. Yeah. Just one thing. I'm sure there are a lot. <laughs> so just one thing, right? Um, the most, my valuable thing right now is actually school. Because we have to go there to go to also university to prepare for college and everything and to get our exams and do well. And uh, yeah. Uh, for now, my most precious thing in my life is I think my family. And sometimes I think family comes first, thank God. And for my prayer topic is, um, we're here for a graduation trip. And that means we are graduating uh, middle school. And we are turning up to like high schoolers. So I want to pray that we can balance our academic life, spiritual, and also personal life, such as like relationship with others and stuff. Yeah. Um, the most important thing in my life is honestly liking some idols. And yeah, <laughs> but my prayer topic would be um, just give all everything away that make my really uh, that broke my relationship between God and me. So my prayer topic is to just get more close to God. Uh, my prayer topic is the I'm going high schooler because uh, if I go to high school. Then it will be very hard, so I can do well and my friends can do well. Um, even though the Bible said I need to put my hopes in heaven, I don't think I can do that right now. And my hope and my treasure in my heart right now, I think, is all about academics because that's the only thing that I can see in my narrow eyes. And because since academics and like universities, those kind of stuff are my treasures, I hope as a graduating student of uh, middle school, um, I hope we all can be very friendly and have great time in our high school lives. Um, the thing I treasure most in this world is probably um, of the preservation of humanity in well there's a lot of wars going on there's a lot of um, worldly conflicts that I think are a lot larger than um, just my school life or just my life so I like to think about uh, the big political grand scheme of things it's a lot and I'm a very politically conscious person and I like to um, think and pray and uh, just value a lot things that uh, would impact future generations and um, peoples. Yeah. I think the treasure in this trip was like memory. Like kind of we play together. <laughs> um, not sleeping uh, until 1 a.m. So memory is a treasure and for tra- free topic, I think. For now, it's safety to go to Seoul and Inchet and because we didn't slap that much, so maybe the condition will be bad. So I think the safety is my top. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a sudden question that I've given to them, but I'm very touched in a way that they were very honest. And uh, I could hear what's in their hearts. So thank you so much. We had like safety to soul to grand scheme of things of war, uh, peace in this world and um, our academics, um, our uh, relationships. Um, and these are all very, very precious, uh, important prayer topics that we want to continue to pray 
uh, for our eighth graders and also all of our JCS students. Um, I will just read the last verse one more time before we pray. It says, For where your treasure is, there your heart, heart will be also. So um, let's finish up with a prayer. I'll be praying for eighth graders. Um, and our JCS students, um, based on what we've been talking about, what we've been feeling here, what we've been uh, praising God about. So let us pray. Father God, um, thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful that I was able to be a part of this trip with these uh, wonderful students, uh, eighth graders of our JCS. And I'm so happy that they are graduating eighth grade um, in the way that they are growing, that they are um, maturing in Christ and in their relationship with each other as well. There were lots of fun, lots of um, learning. So I'm so grateful. We're all so grateful, Lord, uh, for this opportunity once again. Thank you once again, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye, Gyeongju.